Good afternoon, everybody. This is Scott Jefferson with ACES Systems again uh, this week with Todd Underwood, our rotor wing uh, expert. Uh, today we're going to go over our third episode of the uh, rotor wing uh, tail rotor balance. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody joining in today. Let's see. There we go. As you see here, here's sort of our agenda. And for those who have attended the last two weeks, thank you very much. I uh, want to also uh, thank you for coming in today and, for, and please join us next week uh, on June 11th as we talk about main rotor track and balance. And today I'll turn it from there, I'll turn it over to Todd Underwood. Afternoon everybody. Uh, like Scott said, episode three is going to cover tail rotor balance. Um, the way I kind of structured this webinar was, I think I mentioned this last time, was just kind of building upon getting the basics developed and then building upon that. So. We've kind of gotten to the point now where uh, if you're an older customer, you've been refamiliarized with a lot of things. Uh, if you're somebody new, then you kind of know the process that we go through for uh, how we do this. So getting ready to start your tail rotor balance, uh, you're going to want to print down, print or download, print and save your application notes. So you'll have reference material on how to install the equipment, how to walk through the process, uh, any special notes that may be in there. Uh, it's a great reference to have out there on the flight line with you. You're also going to need the setup. We talked about downloading the setup, how to get it into the analyzer. It may already be there, obviously, if you've been doing it for a while. Um, load it into the uh, Cobra 2, get out to the flight line, install your equipment. Again, that's where the app like application note comes in hand in handy. I'm having a hard time speaking today, I apologize. Uh, there's going to be step-by-step -step installation instructions, pictures, diagrams, uh, all the information you need to get the equipment installed properly. Another good idea, grab your aircraft maintenance manual, review the process in the manual itself, uh, look at your polar charts if there's any in there available. Uh, the polar charts are obviously in the setup, but it's always a great resource if you have that and you know uh, what that information is. Oh, you took my pointer. I was gonna... Oh, that's okay. Uh, Pretty simple process, and we won't do much more of the PowerPoint. I'm going to switch over to, again, I've mentioned before, my executive vice president is Cheap's Kate, and he won't let me have a helicopter. So I have to use a virtual machine. Uh, we don't have a helicopter in the building here to be able to simulate or be able to uh, perform a tail rotor balance on. So uh, the simple, simple steps is we're going to walk through here. I'm going to do that all on the screen here. One thing to note all the way at the bottom, though, obviously, you walk through the first steps, you collect data, make adjustments, repeat as required. If you get three to four runs in and you're not balanced, we need to stop, uh, re-look at things, see if the setup is correct, see if the equipment's installed correct, make sure we installed weights in the correct positions. Uh, those are common errors uh, that can make you uh, just chase your tail for a while. So good balance, two, three runs, four runs max, uh, if, you're, if you're at that point and you're not uh, being successful, then we need to relook at everything. Uh, so I think they can see the analyzer now, right? Or the virtual machine? Okay, so virtual machine, analyzer, same thing. I apologize for the little bars up top, but it is as close as I can get to looking just like your analyzer. As you can see, this is the main menu. So we're going to go down and select tail rotor balance. Press OK. We've got some options here. We kind of went through managed setups before. We'll do managed jobs and resume job today. Uh, managed jobs get you into where you can review prior jobs, create reports, delete old jobs if you've got them in there that you just want to get rid of. Uh, you can export them to another analyzer or you can choose to delete them all. And the back key is what I'm using uh, just to navigate back to the previous menu. Um, unfortunately, it's not showing up done right. Uh, resume job will allow you to, it's going to generate a list of incomplete jobs. These are all jobs uh, that were in my virtual machine. And this would allow you to um, continue balancing. Say you've stopped to go to lunch, stopped to you needed to, to fix something or get a part, uh, get some more balance weights, so forth. I went back one too many. And so we're going to go, we're just going to start with start job today, which is what everybody's wanting to do, right? First thing analyze is going to do is because I was in another job, I had a job that I had started that's incomplete. It's going to ask me if I want to uh, if I want to complete that job, and I'm going to say no. And for some reason, I can't see my bottom screen there. 
the function keys don't appear. I'm going to try and fix this. I may regret this. But your function keys are not showing up. There they are. All right, good. So let me go back one screen just so you can see that. Total or balance, start job. He asks us this question, incomplete jobs, and we've got yes or no. So you're going to use your function keys down at the bottom of the screen on the analyzer, right above the keypad and all the other keys is where the soft keys are, the function keys. So we're going to say, do we want to complete this job or do we want to resume this job? I mean, sorry, no, we don't. We want to start a new one. Ask Josh if you can see the function keys now. He sent me a message. <laughs> okay. So once you say uh, start job, it generates a list of setups. As you can tell, I got a whole bunch of stuff in mind. Yours probably won't look like that. Uh, I'm going to choose today to do the Bell 206A slash B. And again, we covered this while we we're start talking about setups, customer ID. I want to name this if I can spell right. Webinar job one, right? So I mentioned before, if you don't name them, when you go back to look at your jobs or review them or do anything else in that management function, they'll just show up as unnamed. And that gets kind of tedious on trying to find the one that you want. I'll also point out down at the bottom of the screen where it says customer or CUST and aircraft reg. Once you've put uh, a customer's name in there or a reg number in there, it remembers that, so you can just press the, the appropriate function key. Let's see what I've got in here for mine. I've only got one registration in on there for mine. I don't know if I have any, should have customers. So you have a list to choose from that you can, that it'll pre-populate the rest of it and just stick it in there so you don't have to. Um, let's do this. There we go. Webinar. Right. Aircraft reg number and any aircraft hours and we're going to press OK to continue. Again, this is a reminder screen. It's going to tell you what vibration channel you're hooked to. It's also going to tell you that your tack power is on. You can cycle tack power on and off uh, with the function key down below. Ooh, as you can tell, a little red thing, I hit the wrong key, stand by, there we go. As you can see, tack power on, tack power off. We've defaulted it to on. Don't worry if you accidentally hit it and turn it off. As soon as you start collecting data, it's going to go right back on again. So we'll turn it back on. That allows you also to, uh, if you want to turn it on or off, go up and test and see where you're, if it's lined up with your tape, if the optical tack or sensor is lined up. So at this point, we know we're hooked to channel A. We've got TAC power, and we're going to press OK. At this point, let's see if I'm sending it data. I'm feeding it data. So I'm going to start off with a little bit higher vibration than what it's showing right now. I'm going to start off OK. So we're reading the RPM. There's a slight difference. I did that just so you could see that. I can make the RPM whenever I want it. There is an RPM filter that's going to uh, restrict you from collecting data if you are uh, too far from that target RPM. Something else I wanted to mention now for uh, current customers, if you've got SP6 and you have to collect data at two different RPMs, you can run into some issues on run two because the RPM filter starts uh, tightening up a little bit after the first run. We fixed that in SP7. We've actually enabled an RPM check feature in the setup. So if you are an MD500 guy, uh, I think AS365, there's a couple others. If you collect data for your tail rotor at two different RPMs, get the, get the SP7 service pack off of the website, download it. You'll be able to go into your setup and turn the RPM check off. And that will allow you to collect data on your tail rotor basically at any RPM. It doesn't restrict it. So that allows you to collect the, the RPM or the data at the lower RPM and at the higher RPM. If you guys have any questions about the service pack or loading it or any of that stuff, uh, shoot us an email at supportacesystems.com. Press OK. And we're collecting data. Aircraft's up and running. 
the data quality is going to go through a little process of saying it's fair, and then once it's good and it's got all this data, it's going to say OK. That's a little quicker than it's going to be on the aircraft, obviously, because I'm using a virtual machine. I'm using a computer. But that is exactly how it will look. So you're going to have two different readings here on the tail rig. You have your current RPM and your average. I'll redo it just so you guys can see that again. And you can see it on, when you're on the aircraft, you'll see the average float all around. It'll go from 0 0.05 to 0.5 and anywhere in between. Uh, you'll see it cycling. You won't see the average uh, do much, just slightly. And on here, you're not going to see it. I apologize. On the aircraft, it will, the RPMs, I mean, the uh, vibes will vary a little bit. So we've got our information. We've got our data. We can uh, look at a polar chart view of it also, if you prefer. Just going to show you the same information and put it on the polar chart, which is something that most helicopter guys are used to looking at. And then if you want to go back, Go back, I hit the wrong button. Whoop. I apologize. It's a little weird working off the keyboard. We'll collect run one again. All right. So we've collected the data. We pressed OK. And now we're reviewing prior runs data. It said we collected data at 2496 RPM. We have a vibration of 0.45 ips and at the clock angle of 1116. Again, we can look at the polar, or down below we can use a function key to hit uh, to retake it if we felt that that data was not good. We had a gust of wind, you know, like I said, pilot kicked the pedals, whatever the case may be. In this case, we're going to say it's good, and we're going to press OK. It's going to remind us to shut down the engines. It's also going to remind us what our max tail rotor weight is allowed. Uh, in this case, it's 15 grams. That's something that we enter in the setup. We'll get that out of the maintenance manual and enter it in the setup. So. That's for you uh, to pay attention to and make sure that you don't exceed. So this is the suggested or installed weights, or it's both, right? So up top, you're going to see position 11, 3.4 grams, and position 12, 1.3 grams. Uh, you'll need to be, and it'll tell you in the setup or in the uh, app note also, what this is. Like on some aircraft, it may be uh, plates. On one, whatever, whatever it is you're installing, it's 99% of the time it's grams uh, for the smaller aircraft, and that'll be represented as GMS in the in the app note as the abbreviation. So we know the setup's built like this. So we know it's 3.4 grams for position 11 and 1.3 for position 12. So I'm going to scroll down and enter that information. This is where a lot of guys uh, don't do this. They make the change and don't enter the information into the analyzer. It doesn't really do them any good on the next run because now the analyzer is confused because it sees a change in vibration, but it doesn't know what you've done. So it's not going to be able to improve. I've mentioned before the analyzer learns, and, and by doing that, it refines the adjustments, it refines the, uh, the charts and the setup to hopefully get you a better setup and reduce the amount of runs that you're going to take because some of these polar chart information is really old. Aircraft have changed over the years and its accuracy may be a little bit off. They're trying to adjust for that a little bit, but if you don't provide the analyzer or the information for what you've done, you're not gaining anything. Um, I also wanted to mention, I've mentioned this before, uh, and I'll just say, so on a position 11, the closest we could get was 4 grams. That's fine. Just tell the analyzer what you did. So in this case, it said 3.4 grams. The closest we could get was 4. Um, position 12, they said 1.3. The closest we could get was 1.5. So we're going to enter that. Um, and before I press OK, I will, let's explore this. So down at the bottom, you'll see one of the function keys. Uh, suggested will install the suggested amount of weight. None, it will obviously, we'll put none in. If you did want to just go ahead and put zero in there and, and, and go to the next one. Re resolve allows you, uh, let's go to it. And I've had this on the Bell 206 before. There's a couple different sets of hardware for the Bell 206. Uh, one of the bolts and nuts that you can use are a little bit larger. I think they weigh 4.4 grams. So if your solution is 3.4, but your hardware weighs 4.4, what are you going to do? So you're going to go to Resolve, 
you're going to tell the analyzer that my minimum hole weight or the attaching hardware weight is 4.4. We're going to press OK. It's going to go back to the installed uh, weights or suggested weights solution page. And if you notice now, instead of, I believe it was 11 and 12 before, now we're on 1 and 8 and the weights have changed. So it's compensated for the heavier uh, hardware and giving you a solution to recalculate it. So we'll do this solution. So on one, uh, we'll just say nine. And for eight, we'll say we could do seven. Now these are just, you know, I'm guessing you guys put in the numbers that, uh, that you can get as close as you can with your hardware that you're using. Josh has recommended that I do that again. So we'll go back to suggested. Oh, wait a minute. We'll go back. All right. So we, we had a suggestion there off the board to go back and do that again. Maybe I went a little too fast. So here's our review and our runs data. We're going to get the warning again. And so then here was the first solution. It was holes 11 and 12, 3.4 and 1.3. Like I said, we, our, hard, our mounting hardware weighs more than that, so we're going to hit resolve. The minimum hole weight for this case is 4.4 grams, which is the bolt and nut to attach the hardware to the weight wheel on the Bell 206. After we do that, you have to press OK for it to generate a new solution. Once we do that, now our solution is 8.9 grams at 1 and 7.1 grams at 8, position 8. So we'll put that in. And we'll press OK and we'll be ready to start run two. If my if I'm on the right board. Actual weights excelled. Yep. So stand by I apologize, that says 0.45. Like I said, I am working on a I've got to do two things at once here, so let me, uh, one second, I've got to change the vibration. Magic like that. All right, so we're simulating, we say we made a little bit of, of, of better, but not, we haven't fixed it yet. So now our vibration is 0.25, and it's moved a little bit, it's at 8.04 where we started out at about 11 o'clock, as you can see here. I like uh, this view better. This shows us run one, where we were at. It shows how it moved, how our adjustment affected the vibration and what direction it moved in. At this option, or on this page, you have the option to retake it again. And you also have the review, which just goes back to the uh, just the pure data screen. So you get the polar view or the data, the data view. I like that view on the helicopter. Uh, <laughs> so at this point, we press OK again. It tells us to shut down engines. Tells us, reminds us again what the max weight is. This time I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use resolve. I'm just going to go through the standard way, uh, even though that probably wouldn't really work on a Bell 206, but we're simulating. So, oh, sorry. I'm, Wrong hole, there we go. Zero. Uh, so hole seven is going to get 1.7. And hole eight is 0 0.5. Yeah, and at that one, we're just going to say, you know what, we're not putting anything there because we don't have anything that small. I'll put the zeros back in the holes where I knocked them out. And again, we are ready for run three. Now this is going a little quicker than it would on an aircraft, obviously, because you actually have to go install that stuff and go find the pilot after he's went in for a snack and a cigarette and disappears for 30 minutes. Sorry if there's any pilots on here. Probably is. I insulted engineers last week. This week it's pilots. Josh should be proud of me. Um, so we've entered our weights, our actual weights that we installed, and we're ready to go ahead and move forward. So now you can tell the vibration is 0 0.09, all right, looking good. We're going to go ahead and press OK, start collecting data. And 
again, we've got our green bar saying we're good. You can look at the data two different ways in the data screen or in the polar chart. It shows you the, the direction and, uh, like I said, the reduction of vibration and the direction that it went in. The next thing I want to show you is, it's going to tell you to shut down. So, again, this is what you will see. And in SP7, we have gave you the, the uh, ability to put in the IPS level. So, again, MD500s, a couple of Airbus, uh, I believe some of the Leonardo's. The tail rotor limit is below 0.2. For eons, 0.2 is just kind of the standard limit for pretty much everything in helicopters. Um, so previous to SP7, the hardware, the vibration limit was just hard-coded in there. It was 0.2. You could not adjust it. For those guys that have helicopters that the manual requires a lower level than that, SP7, again, you'll need to get on the website, download that software, and update your analyzer. Or when it comes through and gets calibrated, it'll automatically get updated. Uh, then you'll have the ability to go in there and set the IPS level to match what your manual says, 0 0.1, 0 0.15, whatever it is. In the meantime, if you uh, don't have that service pack loaded or you don't have the setup modified and you get to this screen, you can still press F5 and go through the process of balancing again. It's going to give you another solution and it's going to try and balance it down even more. I will warn you if that was pretty low, 0 0.09, when you get down much lower than that, I, I would not attempt to balance further because you'll probably go off the other side of the polar chart and it'll just start going back up again. Um, but that function is there for you to either choose F1 to quit the job or choose F5 to continue and balance down even lower. Hey Tom, I've got a question again from Rob. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, so you can have more than two holes with weight in them? Depends on the aircraft, but yes. Unless there's a specific application, you know, unless the aircraft itself says you can only have weight in X amount of holes, there's some that have that that say you can only have it in these two holes or these four holes, a, a limit on that aircraft. But yes, you can have it in more than one hole, generally. Yeah. Okay. The 206 has 12 holes, and I don't remember what the limit is. Uh, now, that sometimes that's a good question because the analyzer may give you, and we put a little note in the application note again to tell you this, that we can provide you a solution that may conflict with something in the manual. Now, we try not to do that, but in the case of this, we don't have a feature in there that says, okay, only put it in two holes or four holes. Uh, so there are times when that may pop up. That's where it's uh, you know incumbent upon the mechanic to Know the maintenance manual. That's why I said review the manual, review the process before you go out and do it, and uh, understand what they're uh, what they're doing in order to not uh, make an adjustment that they shouldn't. If that makes sense. Rob, hope that answers the question. Let me see. All right, where was that? So we showed you F one. So now you've got a couple of options. F1 or F5. F1 quits the job and is going to mark it as complete, and you won't be able to resume that job. It's done. Uh, it'll be filed in there. You'll be able to print it, create a report, review it, but you won't be able to uh, resume it. I want to do something different. I'm going to go F5, continue, and then when I get to this screen, I decided it's time to go to lunch. So. What I'm going to do, what I recommend anytime you guys want to stop the job for whatever reason, maybe you're going home for the day, the pilot had to go to the bathroom, whatever it is you need, and you're like, you know what, we'll be back in a couple hours, let's just, let's just stop where we're at. Use the home key on the analyzer, which I'll show you here in a minute when we do the tips, and that will take you straight back to the main menu. What it also does is... When you go into tail rotor and go to manage jobs, sorry, resume jobs, right there is the job that we were just in, right? So we used the home key, it exited the job, it saved all the data, and it allows us to resume it at or, I say at or near the point where we're at. It's going to take you back to the most logical place in that job. So if you exited it at a weird place, uh, and it requires two steps before that to actually be accomplished again, 
it'll take you back to there. So it took us, if you noticed, I was on the solution page when I left. When I came back, I'm back here on the F5 where I can, or on the F1, F5 screen where I can make a choice of continuing it again. That's because it wanted me to make that decision. So anytime you're quitting a job that you are incomplete, you're not done, you haven't balanced it down below point two, use the home key. That way the data is saved and you can resume it. If you hit F1 quit, it's going to give you a warning. You're about to terminate the job. Or do you want, or are you sure you want to quit? We are at this one because we know we're below point two. We're at point zero nine. We decided, we looked at that other solution. We don't even have washers that small, so we're not even going to try. We're well below the limits. So we're going to say, yeah, we're going to quit. So boom, it went back here. It's gone. Now to view that job or to review it, we go to manage jobs. We go to review. Again, these are going to be in chronological order. That's why I recommend naming them. Uh, so it makes it a lot easier to find them. These are some I did earlier today. I'm going to show you this mechanical issue one here in a minute. Um, so again, reviewing the job. A couple of different ways you can do it. You can look at the data view, or you can go to my favorite view. You can go to the polar chart view. It's going to show you run one, run two, run three, what happened to the vibration, where it moved. It's going to display the polar chart for you to actually see it. Uh, let me go back to the review. If you're on the review screen, you only see one run at a time. So you use the arrow keys on the analyzer to scroll through run one, run two, run three. You'll, the, the advantage to the data screen on this compared to the uh, polar chart screen is it's showing you what was suggested and what was installed on that same screen. So now you're seeing what the analyzer recommended, what you did, and what the result was. On the polar chart view, you're simply seeing, uh, you're not seeing the adjustments. So we'll throw a question out to, to the guys out there other than, who's that guy, Todini? We don't like him. He don't get the answer. Uh, what would a polar chart look like after four runs on a tail rotor head that you couldn't get balanced and probably had a mechanical issue? I don't hear anybody. Oh, they got to answer the board. So I want to show you a job like that. I'm going to hit the home key to get out of this job. We'll go back. And I did this one because uh, I have had guys call me up and they're on run six or seven and they're just, you know, what we refer to as chasing their tail. And what I mean by that is you're making, you're doing exactly what the analyzer says and it's not fixing it. It's just kind of going around, around, around. Most likely, there's an underlying mechanical issue. So when you apply weight to one side of the rotor head, it shifts a little bit and the vibration just moves. So you're chasing it, and you're going to end up chasing it all day because there's something else wrong there. So if you've got a job like that, or somebody, one of your guys comes off the flight line, man, I can't get that thing balanced. Look at the job, and then go to the polar chart view. And if it looks something like this, there's probably something else wrong. Uh, that doesn't indicate a setup issue. That doesn't indicate really anything other than mechanical because you're making changes and it just keeps moving and you keep chasing it. Rob said a circle. A circle. There you go. <laughs> I only went half of a circle, but yeah. yeah. But yeah, I only went four runs, but exactly. Uh, so you just start chasing it around. If you're doing that, uh, most likely you need to stop, get a, good, get a good hard look at that tail rotor head, especially if it was just reinstalled or if there were some bearings replaced or pitch links or pitch horns, blades, whatever, uh, and get a good look at that and see what is going on before you continue to try and balance it. Let's see how long I went. I don't know what else. Uh, uh, obviously, we went over reports before. So a great feature, like I said, for uh, especially when you have external customers. This is the one we used right here, the career report. You notice on the screen, my pending reports went to one now. So we can grab that report, take it off, put it on the USB drive, and uh, print it out, send it to the customer, put it in the logbook, whatever we prefer. Did I do resume job? Resume job? Yeah, I did. Start job, resume job. 
I mean, that's, that's, that's it in a nutshell. I mean, tail rotor balance is, is not uh, a difficult process. We've tried to make it simpler um, in, our, in the way we've uh, structured our application. If you want to switch back over to the PowerPoint, I think I got a couple things I can elaborate on there. Let me see if I can. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Standing by. All right, so some of the things I talked about already, but I just wanted to go back over again, right? Enter the actual adjustments. Uh, like Josh, his famous in line, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, if you don't tell the analyzer what you're doing, you're not going to get consistent, predictable uh, solutions or results. Uh, you, at that point, you're basically using it as an old data collector. You're getting an Ipsen phase, and you're making your own adjustments. You're not using all the capabilities of the analyzer, making your life easier, probably reducing runs, saving money, all those things that everybody likes to do. I talked about this too, using a home key. I want to show you the picture. If you look at the bottom left corner underneath the USB ports, you'll see the home key. It looks like a little house. That's why we call it the home key. Uh, that's how you want to exit jobs. It saves the data, allows you to resume them. I have saw a lot of databases or a lot of reports where I see guys quit the job instead of going to the home key, which means they, uh, they didn't uh, exit it correctly, and then they just started another run, and another, another one, and another one. So instead of having, excuse me, another job, so instead of having four runs on one job, they have four jobs, one run on each. Very hard to look at those and compare the data and see how things are, are working when you do it in that format. Uh, the analyzer doesn't learn anything. So that's not a very efficient way to do it. Uh, it's not how the analyzer is designed to function. So use a home key, resume the job, and do another run. That way it compiles the data and compares it to the run before that. What else we got? Resume job, what I was just talking about, right? Very easy. We did it on the screen. Well, thank you. If, uh, yeah? if somebody's having an issue, let's say, and, and, and you know, with the setup or doing something and, and a job, can they take a screenshot and send to technical support? Can they use that or something like that where they can send the information to you? The best thing to do is, um, let's see, two different things. Let's go back over to the analyzer. The be easiest way to do it is either A, create a report, right? Mm -hmm. If they create a report and send that to us for a particular job, that's going to show us uh, everything that was going on during that job. There's another way that gives us a little more comprehensive look. So instead of, and I don't think I need to do the create report thing again. I did that a couple times, so I think everybody's got that. So if they go down to analyzer management, there's a lot of functionality in here. And then to database management, and we've seen these instructions out via email a lot, right? And copy database to USB. That's going to send a file to their USB drive, or it's going to show up just like a pending report, right? So we'll do it. It's going to pop up there as a pending report. Uh, it's going to go into, a, once you put your USB in there and transfer them, it's going to be a file in a folder named aces underscore db. And they can email that to us. And this is really, the, especially for big problems, this is the easiest way to do it. We take that database file and we put it in this same virtual machine that I'm using now. Once we do that, we have all of their jobs, their setups, and we can see everything that's going on. So if it's been a problem that they've been having on several different jobs, we can see that. If, there, if there's something wrong with the setup, we can see that. If the software isn't the correct version, we can see that. Uh, so that's a great way for troubleshooting for somebody that has an issue like that. Well, there, this, there's also export a job. Uh, if as I said the database is the most comprehensive, tail rotor balance, you can go to manage job and export the job, the single job, and that will come uh, to us also. If you want me to tell them about the secret key, I'll tell them about the secret key, but I thought it was a secret for a reason. 
You know, we have secrets. I mean, that's why they call them secrets. Secret right? case. <laughs> so, on the Cobra, if you feel, I don't know if you guys have your analyzer with you right now, but if you feel about right there, kind of on the top and in between the C and the O on the Cobra. Are you on the Cobra? Are you? Okay, cool. About where my finger is. Anytime you're on a screen, if you press that, heck, you might as well fire it up and show them. Um, it will take a screenshot of whatever is on the screen. We end up getting a lot of screenshots of sideways blurry and bouncing around iPhones, you know, in the aircraft, which we appreciate because we're trying to help you out and we like, you know, sending us the stuff so we can try and do that. But uh, alternatively, you can press the secret key that's no longer secret, well, at least to you guys, and take a screenshot of whatever is on the screen once this fires up. I'll show you. Just wanted to be known that I was told by my executive vice president to divulge this secret. So, as you can see on here, I've got pending reports one. Can they see that? Not really. Not really. Okay, so I got pending reports one, just kind of like we did on that one. And once you, all you really notice, the screen doesn't flash, nothing changes. All you, all you will see, and all you, the only reason you will know that you've successfully taken a screenshot is your pending report number will go up. So it will change. I would do it on my virtual machine for you, but I don't know where the secret key is on my keyboard. I, I, don't, I don't use that. I've got a button for that. Um, but you can do that. Now, once you put the, once you do that, and you transfer your reports. I'm doing this upside down. All right, operation complete. It will come over on your USB stick. I don't know if I can get that or not here. As where does it come? Anyway, I can't get it to my computer to cooperate right now, or my USB drive. It goes onto your USB drive, and then it comes up just as a picture of it. It's a PNG file, I believe. So it'll come up just as, a, uh, as an image. So yeah, now you know our secret. One of them. We got more. Uh, okay, where was I? We'll go back to the PowerPoint. I think I'm about... If you guys have any aircraft-specific questions, too, I know that when tail rotor balances, um, shoot them to support, and we can help you work through those. Uh, talked about this, too, bouncing below point two. Two different ways to do it. Select F5, which allows you to balance below point two. Alternatively, you can modify the setup, select your target IPS, but you have to have service pack seven to do that. So like I said, if, you, if your analyzer hasn't been in to get calibrated, Send it in, get it calibrated, get your serv or your software updated. Uh, or if you just got it, you know, if you it's been six months or you've got a long time before it's due, go on the website. You can download the service pack. There's simple instructions there on how to upload the software. Uh, you don't lose any of your historical data or setups or anything. It's pretty transparent. You'll just load it and go. Then you can create a new setup and reduce that limit. One more time. Warning support and service, we always like to talk about that because we think we're really good at it and people tell us we are, so we must be. Uh, industry leading five-year warranty, product support, very quick service times, calibration, expedite services are available. We always like to bring that up, remind you guys. Thursday, the grand finale, I'll be done. Main rotor track and balance. So. We've done the tail, we've done all this other stuff, the app notes, the setups, you know, we've got everything we need to know. So we'll tackle main order track and balance. Uh, I'll run through it just like I did today on the screen. And uh, hopefully that'll, that'll be very informative for everybody. And for everybody's final or everybody's favorite part of the program, <laughs> final thoughts with Scott. Yeah, I don't know about favorite part, but thanks anyway, Todd. Well, he just sits there. <laughs> Well, again, that's the, um, and again, I say the word again too many times. 
the, the uh, Todd, again, Todd and the Cobra II both make this look real simple. I'm not an AMP or aeronautical engineer by any means, but the, again, with the, with the equipment and with Todd and with the support uh, that this company, this company offers, uh, again, we make rotor track and balance as, as seamless as, as possible. I feel like I can do it no better, but I wouldn't want to fly in the aircraft I w did work on. The, uh, if you all have any questions regarding pricing, if you want to upgrade, again, the equipment, you want to get a new system, you want to talk more to Todd, we have two, uh, you know, call us at 865-671-2003 or you can reach us at sales at asissystems.com. Uh, Todd, you can reach at support at asissystems.com. There will probably be more questions come usually after the webinars, so feel free to contact us on any one of those uh, email addresses. Thank you all again for joining. Again, look forward to seeing you this Thursday for Maine Rotor Track and Balance. Again, any questions, give us a call.